Hello, 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 brothers. Hello, sisters. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing, sister Scott? I see your joy hat come down there. How you doing, sister? How you doing? Come on in, brothers. Come on in, sister. It's dinner time. Come on in so you can get some good food this evening. Your brother Tony is your chef. So come in. I got some good vittles for you to eat this evening. If you was uh, with the Beverly Hillbilly, you remember that terminology, vittles. So come on in, my brother. Come on in, sister. We're going to have a good time this evening. I hope that you, brother, sister, had a good uh, day today. Your brother Tony is here. Today is the over the hump day, so we're going to get over the hump and we're going to get prepared for a new day if it's the Lord will. I look forward to talking to you, brothers and sisters, almost every day. It's family time, so come on in, come on in, invite a guest. Go ahead and invite a guest. We got plenty of food to uh, go around, okay? If you sit in the back, come close to the front. You ain't got to sit back there. Just come up close. It's, it's time for it's family time, my brothers. It's family time, my sisters. How you doing, mother? I see my mom in the house. Come on in, come on in, come on in. We got a plate set out for you, mother. Come on in, brothers. Come on in, sisters. We're going to give a few more people opportunity to come in, and we'll be about to roll into the show. How you doing, sister Monica Kim? How you doing, sister? How you doing? A few more seconds, and we're going to get into this content tonight. It's going to be a good show, okay? So just let a few more people come in. Well... It's almost time for, it's almost show time. Okay, show time, show time. How you doing, brothers? How you doing, sister? Your brother, Tony, is in the house. If this is your first time looking at this broadcast, if this is your first time at dinner, allow me to introduce myself. I'm the chef for this show. My name is Tony M. Tuma, and I talk about relationships. I talk about relationships of that between a man and a woman that should be serious, commit, and move towards the covenant relationship. How you doing, Sister Flo Harvey Martin? See you, see you at the dinner table. Come on in, brothers. Come on in, sister. We're about to get into this good show this evening. I talk about relationships, my brother. So for those of you that are new, remember, my name is Tony M. Toomey. If this is your first time, and you, my brother, sister, I, I invite you to come again. I invite you to come again. This is not the first time, so Lord willing, you could be invited to the dinner table again. But I talk about, again, relationship between a man and a woman, and when I talk about relationship between a man and a woman, I talk about the relationship from a biblical perspective. When I say biblical perspective, I strongly believe that God created the man first, and secondly, he created the woman. He created the man, Adam, first. He had a unique relationship with Adam. Secondly, he created the woman, Eve. He represented the woman, Eve, to Adam. And Adam said in the presence of God, in reference to Eve, bone of my bone, flesh of my, my flesh, I will call a woman because she came from man. Now, if you believe in any other type of relationship, my brother and sister, you have what is called a free will. You can do whatever you choose to do. But I encourage you to watch this broadcast. Maybe you can get something out of it, okay? Now, we're about to get into tonight's topic. Tonight's mm -hmm. topic is when a man loses a good woman, she says to herself, only if he really knew me. That's right, brothers. When you lose a good woman, not just a woman, brothers, but I'm talking about, quote, unquote, a good woman. When you lose her, because of some decisions you made or some wrong actions you took in the relationship, that good woman, more than likely, she have tried to work out things with you. More than likely, you are, she have tried to convince you to let's make this relationship uh, go better. But when she tried to talk to you, it fell on deaf ears, and now she's gone. And when she's gone, she reflect back. She might still have a little feeling for you. But she thought it was best for her to, to depart because for whatever reason, brother, she just thought that you were not going to get it. But now some of you brothers, you get it because some of you brothers, you have lost a good woman. This is the key. Remember a good woman. Now, we, now we're all familiar with R. Kelly, right? But let me be clear. R. Kelly wasn't the first man that made this statement. 
when a woman is fed up, there is a nothing you can do about it. Many of men have experienced when a good woman departs from him. But I will talk to you more about that a little later. Now, the question is, not what is a woman. The question is, what is a good woman? Now, here are some characteristics. I'm going to give you two versions of what a good woman is. I'm going to give you, per se, a worldly version of what the world would say a good woman look like. And then I'm going to give you a perspective from what God say. And once I finish telling you what God said, we're going to get into more into this content tonight. Now, from a worldly standpoint, the world say that a woman, a good woman is look like this, which is nothing wrong with these words that I'm about to say. The world will say a, a woman look like she's honest and trustworthy. Nothing wrong with that. The world will say that she's authentic and genuine. Nothing's wrong with that. The world will say that a good woman is intelligent and curious. Nothing wrong with that. The world would say that a, a good woman is confident. Nothing's wrong with that. The world would say that a good woman is independent. From the world standpoint, nothing's wrong with that. The world say that a good woman is supportive. Nothing wrong with that. The world would say that the, a good woman, she have empathy, meaning she's a good listener. Nothing wrong with that. The world would say that a good woman has compassion and forgiving. Nothing's wrong with that. The world would say that a, a good woman is kind. Nothing wrong with that. Each point that I just made from the world standpoint, really there's nothing there's nothing wrong with those characteristics of what the world say a good woman or a pattern of what a good woman has, okay? But well, let me tell you this. Again, my brothers and sisters, the question is, what does a good woman look like? A good woman, my brother and sister, listen to me carefully. Don't hear me. A good woman, she is one that, number one, she follows God. If you notice in the first part when I was describing uh, what the world said a good woman, notice I didn't say nothing about God. Because where I got these characteristics from, it did not list God in the equation. Now, a real good woman, when I say a real good woman, I'm not talking about a woman that, from a world standpoint, is not good. Because, you see, when the world talk about a good woman, it's those characteristics that I just left, okay? How you doing, Sister Peggy? in Sister Monica. So what the world say about a good woman is nothing wrong with those characteristics, but they kind of come close to what a good woman look like from God's perspective. Mm -hmm. When I say God perspective, how you doing, Sister Mary? When I say God perspective, see, God got a pattern for how a good woman looks and behaves. The world tried to copycat off of what God say, but they can't really get it right. Now, a good woman, from God's perspective, this woman is patterned, and she is called the virtuous woman. Now, a virtuous woman, in other words, she's a Proverb 31 woman. A Proverb 31 woman, a virtuous woman, or sometimes I would call her a unicorn, these type of women, they are very, very rare. Out of 100 women, out of 100 women, there may be 10 good women out of every 100. That's 10%. So that might be out of 100 women, they're going to be probably 10%, and that's a small percentage. You know why? Because the other women that go around saying that they are good, they are good based on worldly standards and what these women think about themselves. But the 10 percentile of women that I'm talking about, these women don't have to go around saying they're good women. You know why? Because people say that these women are good women. Why do people say these women are good women? Because they observe these, this woman's uh, uh, character. 
and they compliment the woman not only based on how she look on the outside, they compliment the woman how she carries herself, how she talks, how she moves, and how she walks. This is a God woman. A virtuous woman is a God, Holy Ghost-filled woman that follow after God's Son, Jesus Christ. And I have told you, brothers and sisters, primarily sister, I'm telling you, the true pattern of a good woman, it is simply there in God's word, the Bible. And you know, I always go to Proverbs 31. So if any woman, brothers, if any woman, sister, want to know what a good woman or model of a woman look like, all you have to do is read Proverbs 34, but when, before you read it, you need to pray to God. This is better for you, brothers, when you're looking for a good woman. You have to pray to God and say, God, open me up to the blueprint, how uh, a Proverbs woman or a 31 woman or a virtual woman look. And believe me, brother, when you pray to God, God going to show you the pattern of the woman that he molded in his hand. He's spe he he specialized in molding people. Let me tell you what God does, brother. God would take a woman that is lowly and hard. Now, God take these type of women. These are women that aren't proud. These are women that are not boisterous. These are women that are not lying. So God handpicked these women and it's just like God is a potter. He specifically structure a woman on the inside as well as the outside to meet your need, brother. And when I said to meet your need, when I said you, brother, I'm talking about you, God, brother. I'm not talking about word of brother. I'm talking about you, God, and meaning that you desire a good woman in your life. Now, what are the characteristics of a good woman? I'm going to condense this, brother, so you can see the pattern, and I'm going to expound a little bit and explain what a good woman looked like before I get to the main topic, when a man lose a good woman. She says to herself, only if he really knew me. How you doing, Sister Cheryl? Now, a good woman, when we look in God's word, Proverbs, I'm going to get, I'm, I'm extracting a little bit. I'm going to elaborate and then we're going to get to the main topic. Okay. Now from God's word, a good woman, she is a, she's noble in character. She's noble in character. Her worth is far more than rubies. She is, she don't have no prize. A good woman out of 100 10% of these women, they are far, they are, they are worth it worth far more than ruby. You see, you think that gold is the thing. No, from a biblical standpoint, it's ruby. And when this woman is a good woman and God mold this woman, she's woman, she more, she's prepared to be a wife if she's not a wife already. Now, let's say that this woman is a wife, brother. Her husband, not her boyfriend, not her play husband that she live with or live with her. Not a, a midnight rider. We ain't talk, how you doing, Sister Indian? Not a midnight rider. You know what a midnight rider is? A midnight rider is somebody that come through at the night. So this woman, she she is ride ready or she has a husband. This woman, her husband have full confidence in her. He had full confidence in her. And she lacks nothing of value. She got a whole bunch of value. This is one of the 10 percentile of women out of 100. She has value. She works eagerly with her hands. She's not lazy. She's not waiting for the man to do everything. How you doing, Sister Enya? These type of women, they understand why they were created. They understand. They understand the scheme, some of the uh, schemes of God why they were created. These type of women, they know what they must do, especially if their wife ready, they get married, and possibly they have children. This woman understands her purpose. These type of women, they know how to shop. When these type of women know how to shop, they, sh they don't throw money away. They don't throw resources away. 
They, when they are shop, they shop with purpose. They don't shop yet to throw money away because they're thinking about God. They're thinking about their man, their husband. They're thinking about their children. And last but not least, they're thinking about themselves. So these type of women are smart shoppers. These type of women know how to take care of their husband. These type of women know how to take care of their children and family. She has her side thing going on too. When I say her side thing, these women aren't lazy. They're going to be industrial, not only with her family, but she's going to have her own stuff going on. She's not a lazy, busy body. She's not up in other people's business. She's not that way. She is uh, not only that, she is kind to people that she do, do not know. She's kind to strangers. She's not all about people that she know. She feels compassion to people that she does not know. And when I say compassion, you know what, my brother and sister, even the book of Proverbs say this, don't be forgetful to entertain strangers because we have entertained angels unawarely. Do you understand that, my brother and sister? But the Bible clearly say, don't be forgetful to entertain strangers. What is a stranger? A stranger is someone that you don't know. You could look at a human being and you think that's a human being, but that could be an angel. A lot of time, most of the time, angels aren't going to say, hey, I'm an angel. They take on human bodies. So there are these godly women, they treat strangers real good. Not only their family and friends, but strangers. In the, on the inside, she's got the strength she got strength and she got dignity about herself. When she talks, she talks with wisdom. She doesn't talk with foolishness. This woman talked from her from God's point of view. She you ain't no catch this woman getting into a lot of foolish conversation. Her conversation are light, but they are yet they're deep. She doesn't gossip. You're not going to hear talking too much about other people on a negative point. Her children highly respect her. If she has children, they highly respect her. And her husband doesn't find the need to spoil her. There are some women that they want a man to spoil her. But the Bible clearly shows that a man that really got a good woman, he doesn't have to spoil her. You know why a good man don't have to spoil a good woman because this man knows that he has to do what is called just because. Just because she is mine. That's what a, a good man, a good righteous man, not a perfect man, but a righteous man, when he see his wife, not his girlfriend, not his living, when he see his wife, he say, I'm going to do something for her. I'm going to do something for her on a continual basis. I'm going to protect this woman. I'm going to provide for this woman. I'm going to do some things that she don't even ask for. But my main thing is to make sure I protect her and I provide for her and meet all her needs. And not only all her needs, I'm going to do a lot of just because things. When I said just because thing, just because you, you, baby, that's how a godly man would think. Just because you, you. And I'm going to do something that you don't even ask for. Why am I doing this for you? Because I love you. That's how a man should be thinking. I'm doing this because I love you. A godly man, he would do things. He don't have to blow no horn and get her prepared for nothing. He just does things for her. He likes to see her. He likes to see her heart smiling. And when he know her heart smiling, it reflects on her face. That's what a man would do for a woman that he's really in love with. Because he loved this particular woman right after his love for God. Now back to the topic. When a man lose a good woman, she says to herself, only if he really knew me. Now, what do I mean by that? I said a good woman. I didn't say no woman. There are a lot of relationships around here. And as I have told you, my brother and sister, God does not, God does not put every man and every woman together. 
most of the relationships that you witness, my brother and sister, most of the people that are in relationship, believe me, God did not put these individuals together. They may look good together in person. They may look good on social media like Facebook. They may look good on TV. That doesn't mean that God put them together because they look good. You, Some of you brothers and sisters, you looking at these couples like, they the modern, they the model couple that you need to model your relationship after. I have told you, brother and sister, do not model your relationship after another man or another woman. Well, who you should model your relationship as, you should model your relationship how Christ loved the church. That's how that's the ultimate model because a man and a woman they got shock coming. A lot of couples that you see, my brother and sister, that smile, they smile, but they got a lot of H-E-L-L -L in their home, but you don't see that part. You see the part that they want you to see. You understand? So when a man loves a good, lose a good woman, she say to herself, only if he really knew me. What do I mean by that? Now, the sad part about what I'm about to talk about, my brother and sister, most men that lose a good woman, one of the 10 out of one every 100, a man, a sad part is a man that he, most of these guys, they are narcissists. Most men that lose one of the 10 percentile of good women, they are narcissists. And what happens? They take a good woman for granted. And then this woman eventually she gets fed up with all that stuff that this man does to her mentally, emotionally, bodily, and financial. A lot of you brothers, I hope that I'm not talking to you. I could see a worldly man do some things to some women, but some of you brothers, you need to wake up, and I would say smell the coffee, but you need to drink the coffee and smell it. Some of you brothers, you need to wake up because some of you brothers, not the worldly men, but some of you brothers, you are on the verge of losing a good woman, not a woman. I'm saying a good woman, a proverb, 31 woman, a virtual woman, a unicorn. Now, how do you do this, brother? You, you lose a good woman when you refuse to do one main thing. And what is that one main thing? How you doing, sister, or coming? This is how you lose a good woman. And remember, when I say a good woman, I'm not talking about a perfect woman. I'm talking about a good woman that's falling after God himself, not a worldly woman. You, the key thing, a good woman that's falling after God through his son, Jesus Christ. This is how you lose a good woman. How you doing, Sister Yolanda? Sister Yolanda said, J wow, just told a man, though, is that where he's a narcissist and trying to take me for granted. Confirmate. Okay, thank you, Sister uh, Douglas. When you lose a good woman, brother, I shouldn't have to tell you this, but I got to tell you, because I know some worldly men probably listening to. This is how you lose a good woman. In one, one word, but I'm going to expound. I'm not going to explain. When you do not love her. That's how you lose her. You do not love her. Not only do you not love her, you don't try to understand her. Those two components. You do not know how to love her. You don't love her. You don't try to understand her. These are two important things that you need to master, some of you brothers and some of you worldly men. You have to master how to love a woman and you have to master how to understand a woman. Now, brother, you, were, you did not come into the world knowing how to love a woman. You did not come into the world knowing how to understand a woman.
You understand? You came into the world, brother, flesh-minded. You came into the world with your heart bent against God. So when you come into this world, this go for you, some of your brother that got saved. Before you got saved, brother, including myself, we were of, of the world. We were of the world. There's not one man, and I always say this, there's not one man, there's not one book you could pick up and a man could tell you straight up how to love a woman. Most men that write books, most men that make videos, most men that make CDs that tell other men how to love a woman, they don't have a clue. Mm -hmm. They don't have a clue of how to love a woman. You know why they don't have a clue? Because they don't have no relationship with God. In order for a man to master how to love a woman, it is imperative, it is important that he has a relationship with God through Jesus. A man, he has not the ability within himself. And I have told you this a little bit, but I'm going to expound a little more. This is what happened. Remember, God created the man, right? God created the man. So when God created the man, the man has to understand his purpose of life. He has to understand who he is, why he's here, and where he's going. In order for a man mm -hmm. to know who he truly is, in order for a man to know where he's going, in order for a man to know why he's here, he has to get all that information from God. This man must pray to God. First of all, he has to make time for God. Once he make time for God, he has to talk to God. Once he talk to God, he has to read God's word. So when this man make time for God, when he talks to God, when he read God's word, God's words transform this man's thinking. Without God's word, you cannot go by what just a preacher said every Sunday. You got to eat God's word daily. Just like you eat food daily, brothers, you have to eat God's word daily. What do I mean by that? You have what is called a spirit. You have to feed yourself. You are made of you are made of spirit, soul, and body. You have you got the spirit of God. The spirit of God, you have to read his word. And when you read God's word, his spirit takes it, break God's word down, and feed it to your soul, which is your mind, your will, and your emotion. God's spirit teach you, show you, and guide you based on God's word, how to relate to your body because how you are on the inside is going to reflect on the outside. So when you go to God privately, and this is a daily thing, you can't take time out. If you got a woman in your life, there's no time off. You may take some time to yourself, but you it's a full-time job. Any man that brings a woman into his life and say, I do, that's a full-time job. You have no vacations. You can't call in sick when you have a good woman. No vacations, no time out unless you're part of the vacation. You understand? You got to be serious when you deal with a woman. You have to commit to her verbally. You, When you commit to this woman verbally, you got to let her know where things stand from wh where you are. You cannot allow this woman to assume her position in your life. She have to have clear lead. She has to have clear knowledge of where she stands. You don't want that woman to be confused with her position in your life. You have to verbalize where this woman is in your life. You have to verbalize it. You have to use your mouth. Some of you brothers that like to be quiet, you got to talk up. You got to have an eyeball 
to eyeball conversation with the woman. You have to eliminate all distractions, look in that woman's eye, move your mouth, and tell this woman where she stands at in your life and what you want to do with her in your life. When you start talking the love language of we, us, and I, well, not me, myself, and I, you understand? So while you're talking to her and while you're looking into your eye, you done prayed to God, right? So what you're doing with your words, see what happened is come from your mind, which God's spirit uh, talked to your mind, your will, and your body, which is your soul, and you carried out through your body. So what God is going to do? God is going to call this woman to be receptive to what you're trying to do for her. Because women, women are just like good soil. If you got a good woman, she is like good soil. What do I mean by that? Brother, you are a farmer. So if you are a farmer, you have to cultivate. A woman, a good woman is like good soil. So God bring this good soil to you. Remember, Adam was made out of what? Dirt. Eve was made out of dirt. So the woman that you're cultivating, she is soil. So you have to plant into her. Once you plant into that woman, she's going to receive it like good ground. And when you plant into that woman, if she got good soil, it's going to produce something. You understand? Whenever you plant in good soil, if you're a farmer, whatever seed you plant in, you're going to reap what you just cultivated. You cut up the ground, you plant. And when you plant, you cover it up and you do everything you could do. You understand? So with God help, just like God, if you are a little reformer, the only thing you could do is do your part. God going to cause the increase. If you notice, if you are a farmer, when you plant a seed, you do you got to do some work and God doing some work. God is actually doing more work than you, brother. All you doing, brother, if you was a little reformer, you just breaking ground and you plant the seed and you covering up. And you got that every now and then to make sure that it's growing. But what you do not see like a literal form of God is causing that seed that on the inside to incubate. And when it's incubating in there, it's germinating. And when it's germinating, eventually it's going to sprout open. Or to tell you another thing, it's like a butterfly. That woman that you have, when you first bring a woman into your life, she is like a caterpillar. I'm not saying that the woman is ugly. I'm talking about on the inside, she like a caterpillar. So what does a caterpillar do? We know what a caterpillar does, don't we? A caterpillar moves around and eventually it forms a cocoon. And while that, that a caterpillar is in that cocoon, something is going on on the inside. So brother, your woman, is like a caterpillar. She's and her body is like the cocoon. Something going on on the inside. And what happened? It's just like before a butterfly come out of the cocoon, it's getting strong. It's doing its wings like that. And that's what you're doing, brother. You're you're helping her to be able to fly. And once that butterfly come out of the cocoon, it's beautiful and it can fly. Butterflies are beautiful, but going back to the soil, what happened? It starts sprouting, and when it starts sprouting, you're going to dig around it, and you're going to prune it. What do I mean by prune? This, When this woman is, when you're doing the right thing, you're going to make sure that this woman is good on the inside, and you're going to make sure she look good on the outside, so that's what pruning does. You taking some some stuff, you moving it for the good stuff to come up. And the only way you're gonna understand it, brother, I'm telling you, you got to have a relationship with Christ because you don't know what that woman needs. You really don't know. You know what the world tell you what a woman needs, but you don't know. World men, they they sell these books, they sell these CDs, they be on 
YouTube and everything telling other men what to do for a woman. These guys don't know nothing. Majority of them, they don't know nothing. Cause why? They never tell other men nothing about God. God is the only one that knows how to treat a woman. Why? Because God created a woman. So if God created a woman, you get your secrets and stuff, brother, back from God. You have to go to God. God is the master in how to treat a woman. And he has to be on the inside of you to treat her right. So that means it gets to love. Now, what is love? Love, we're talking about unconditional love. What is unconditional love, brother? When you mature, brother, unconditional love is where you see this woman as an imperfect person like you are imperfect. You have to look at this woman like she's going to fall on her face like you're going to fall on your face. You got to look at this woman and say she going to she going to piss me off sometime. I'm going to piss her off sometime. You got to look at this woman like I'm not going to walk out the door on her and hopefully she don't walk out the door on me. You got to learn how to tolerate some things. You know why, brother? Because women... They move different than me. They, that's why they're called a woman and they're called females. Women don't move like men. That's what some of you brothers do not understand. Women don't, do not move like men. Women move by how they feel. I always say that. Women move how they feel. That's why they always saying stuff like, mm -hmm. I feel, I felt this way. That's why I did it. They go by their feelings. You, brother, you were not structured the way women structure. You were structured analytical. So what does love do? Love. Look at a person and you look at that person as, I've got to put myself in that person's shoes. i got to put myself in that person's position. God put me in a position. I'm not over her. I'm not better than her. We're equal. But we got different responsibilities and duties and boundaries in this relationship. That's why you have to analyze stuff, brothers. You have to analyze stuff. So when you analyze how to treat a woman, it's called unconditional love. You don't love that woman based on conditions. Because if you love that woman based on condition, you are getting into your feelings. Feelings go up and down. What happens when you get pissed off at this woman if you strictly go by your feelings? You got to look at this woman and say, hey, sometimes you got to let some things roll, brother. Okay, she did this. I got to let that roll. You can't, you can't talk down to her. When you, when, if you love her, you got to talk to her with Loving kindness. You cannot, I always say to brother, you cannot talk to a woman like she is a man. Because she's not a man. She will never be a man. You can't tell a woman a man up. She's not there. Women, I don't care how much they want to portray like they solid and they independent stuff. Women are fragile. Why do I say women are fragile? Because when you look in God's word, God tell Peter, when you look at what Peter said, Peter said this, he said, husband, love your wives. And then he moved on to with understanding. You have to understand her. Are you going to understand everything about her? No. But if you have a relationship with God, you're going to know more than a worldly man. Worldly men lower to a woman is buying things. That's how worldly men show women that they love. They don't know no other way but to buy stuff. And maybe take some time with her. But the worldly man thing, if I buy her something and I take her somewhere, that's love. That's a lie. That's not love. It's nothing wrong with buying a woman something. It's nothing wrong with spending time, but it's something deeper than that. Brothers, a good woman, a good woman don't look for you to buy her stuff all the time. 
but it's something that she want you to buy. She want to buy your time. A good woman prefer your time more than other things because she know you're going to do other things for her because she's going to know that you're thinking about her. So she know you're going to do what's right by her even though that you're imperfect. So then you start understanding the woman. And how do you understand the woman? You start understanding that woman, you got to have compassion. Where do you get compassion from? You get compassion from the Lord. If you read in the Lord's word, when Jesus did a lot of things, what does it say? It said he moved with compassion. So brother, you got to have compassion. You have to have empathy when you're dealing with your woman. When I say your woman, I'm not talking about your girlfriend. I'm not talking about the woman that you live with and you're not and you're not committed to her. I'm not talking about that woman that you drive by between 12 and 2 at, in the morning. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a woman that you got serious with, that you verbally told this woman that, hey, you the one. You the one. And I want to go the distance with you. I want to get on that track field and I see that goal. I want to try, I want to cross that goal. I'm, I want to try, cross that goal. It G O A L. And I want to get that gold medal. You, sister, are the gold medal. You are the gold medal. And if you look at the Olympics, you know how at the Olympics they got three medals, right? They got gold, silver, and bronze. You want the gold medal. And the gold medal is a good woman. And you know who you want to put that gold medal around your neck, brother? You want God to put that gold medal around your neck. When God put that gold medal around your neck, that's a good woman. So that's where you want you, that's what you want God to do. You want God to put that gold medal around you. So you have to understand her. Cause once you the Bible clearly say that the woman is the weaker vessel. It, it did say she stupid. It did say she was unlearned. It did say no vile things about it. It just say that she's the weaker vessel. That's why God, brother, put you in a position to be the head and leader of the relationship. Mm -hmm. If you have a good woman, a good woman will follow you. You don't have to tell a good woman all the time to follow you. You may say, follow me every now and then. Just like Jesus, when Jesus will walk around, he'll say, follow me. And then when Jesus said, follow me to people, they had a choice. They either follow or not. Jesus didn't beat them with that. The people that followed Jesus, guess what? They seen something in him. What did they see in Jesus? They seen that Jesus was serious. They seen that Jesus was committed. That's what they seen in Jesus. Serious, com committed, and Jesus wanted a long life, everlasting relationship with them. That's how you have to function when it comes to a good woman. You spiritual brothers. You have to function on, she's, and then you got to understand this, just because the Lord put you in a head and leadership role, that don't mean that you better than a woman, because the Bible clearly say that God created the man and woman in his image, and his likeness, but it said this about God, it said that God, uh, man is the glory of God, and then it said this, but the woman, it said, but. That's a contract. It said, but the woman is the glory of the man. You got to understand order, brother. You got to deal with a woman in an orderly way. You cannot be disordered when it comes to a woman. You got to have your stuff together when you're dealing with a woman, a good woman. And I said, out of every 100, there are just 10% of women that's good. Now, the sad part, what I was talking about, what I'm about to talk about is a narcissist man. This is a word of man. He takes a good woman for granted. Why does he take a good woman for granted? Because he does not see that woman for how she is. That's like when I, when I said the topic, I said, when a man lose a good woman, 
When she gone, she might still have feelings for him, but when she's gone, in her mind, she may say to herself, only if he really knew me. That's what a lot of women ask themselves when they come out of a bad relationship. Only if he really knew me. If he really knew me, I would be there with him. If he only knew how to love me unconditionally. He did, he did not keep score when I fell on my face. He was able to talk to me in a considerate and gentle way. He didn't call me no name. He was thinking more about my feelings. He was very strategic in how he communicated verbally with me. He used kind and uplifting words to lift me up. He didn't use vicious words to break me down. This man loved me. This man, he strive every day to build me up. I could tell sometimes that I disappointed him. I could tell sometimes that he pissed off at me. But even though I fell down on my face sometimes, even though I disappointed him, he looked at me and he might have shook his head. But when he talked to me, he talked to me in a caring and understanding way. He did not threaten to leave me. He did not say things like, if you do that one more time, I'm out. Or one more time, you out. He did not give me ultimatums. Because he understood me. He met all of my physical needs. How did he meet all my physical needs? He met my physical needs because he had a relationship with God, Son, and Jesus. So, he cannot meet my deepest need because my deepest need came from Jesus himself. So Jesus used this man to meet some of my needs. That's why I want to walk with this man as I walk with the Lord. I want to walk by this man. I don't want to walk in front of him because I'm not the head of the relationship. I don't want to walk behind this man Whereas I'm here because I'm too short. I want to I want to walk by this man. I want to walk by my man. I know I can say that's my man because he say that I'm his woman. He tell me that frequently. He tell me that throughout the week. He tell me almost every day verbally that he loved me. I know he loved the Lord. But this man tell me every day that he loved me. If I'm not around that man, my phone, I could, a text will go off. And when I read that text, I love you. When he, when I, he called me, when we in a conversation, no matter what the conversation is, he say he loved me. When we be together, this man hold me. He don't look to have sex with me all the time. He just hold me. I talk. I know that I talk so much. I know that I get on his nerves, but he just listening. He might still shake his head. He might be saying, I know. Then sometimes I have to say, I don't I talk too much. Don't I talk too much? He'll say, baby, go ahead. Express yourself. But he might think, yeah, you do talk too much. But then he don't, he don't criticize me. He don't criticize me. If he say something to me, he's saying something to help me and our relationship. When he talks to me, I always hear him say, baby, what do you think about if we do this? Baby, it's all about us. We, us, and then whenever we get stuff together, this is ours. He don't be saying me. He don't be saying me, myself, and I. He be talking about us collectively as one. That's what he be talking about. But the narcissist man, he goes another way. He goes another way. Everything that I have just said to you, brothers and sisters, a narcissist man is the complete opposite. 
a narcissist man is more of a word to me. Some of you sisters have went, have dealt with a narcissist man. Some of you sisters, you are now dealing with a narcissist man. Some of you sisters, you are so tied to a narcissist man. You trying to figure out how can I get away from this clown? Mm -hmm. Like Smokey Robinson said, you be crying because you crying over the you crying the tears of a clown. How can I get away from him? How Lord? How can I get away from him? This man, he don't care nothing about me. The only time this man come to me is when he wants something. He don't really talk to me. When he does things, it's all about me, myself, and I. For example, he tell me that he finna go with his boys. He be with his boys most of the time. He may work a little bit, but when he off, he got to go hang with his boys. Other than that, if he ain't hang with the boy, I got to go see what mama want. He's a mama boy. I got to go. This is my hobby. I got to go do this. And, and he wait to the, la the latter part of the night to see what I need. I call him. He don't, he don't, he don't answer the phone right then. I don't know what that guy doing. I don't know what he doing out there. When, when, when I, when he called me, I answer the phone just like that in a short period of time. When he texts me, I respond in a, a short period of time. I don't do this to this man. I don't let days go by without him communicating with me. I communicate with the man daily. He's not in jail. He work. He work eight hours. That means that he got a break. He got two break time, two fifteen minute breaks, and he got a lunch break. And you mean to tell me I called you and text you, and you could not respond to me within that time? I know your phone there because when you be with me, every time somebody calls you, you you pick up the phone and say hello. Every time somebody texts you, you respond quickly. So I know how you are with your cell phone. Oh, you get mad? You get mad and you don't want to. You see, God said, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. You, you take stuff to the extreme. You get so pissed off at me. That what you so say. You get so pissed off at me. You don't want to talk to me for days. Oh, you call yourself punish me, right? You, that's what you're doing. You're punishing me, right? Every time you ask me to do something, I do it. That's what you're supposed to be saying. You good sister. Every time he asks me to do something, I do it. Because I want two things. I want peace. I want peace. And I want this man to love me. Give me two things. Give me some peace and give me love. If you give me love first, I know I'm going to get some peace. But if you don't love me, I know I can't get no peace. Because you see, that narcissist, he's not going to give you no peace, sister. He's going to rob you of your peace. You will never have peace with a narcissist. The first couple of days when he met you, you had some peace. Because he fed you some fairy tales. And then after a while, you the true him. Cause you know when people first meet, they show their best. They they show they come with masks, right? And then you start knowing this. You then you start learning some things about him. And then when you start seeing those red flag from the narcissist sister, some of you sister, you think that you could change this narcissist. You can't change him, sister. You cannot change a man. A man, and I I see some writings out there where. Some people be saying, if a man love you, he would chain for you. Wrong. No man ain't no chain for you because he love you. A man chain because he have a relationship with God first. And when a man have a relationship with God first, God going to change that man to be the man that you need in your life. Not what you want, but what you need. So some of you sister, you dealing with a man, he appear to be good, right? He do some wonderful thing every now and then, but the bottom line, does he have a relationship with God? If he doesn't have a relationship with God, he gonna treat you based on what the world say. 
Sister Douglas says, so what do you have to say about a man saying you trying to control me by not being able to have all these lady friends, especially when you say we're in a relationship? Sister Douglas, you made a good point. Let me tell you this. Brothers, Let me tell you, let me let me just be clear. I know some of you brothers might get angry, but I'm finna tell these sisters some truth. Sister, when a man tell you, use that word, you controlling me because you have a problem with my lady friend. Sister, it's more than what's going on. Listen to me, sister. If a man put other women and things in front of you, you're not that important to him. Because if a man have a relationship with God, especially if a man or husband, there's only one person that come before you. That's God. No other women, not his mama, not his daughter, if he have a daughter beside or son, his job, his career, nothing come before you but God. If you sister don't understand that, you think this man know what he's doing. This man, if that's a classic sign, Sister Douglas, of a narcissist. You're not trying to control him. What he's doing is gaslighting you. Gaslighting, he trying to make it seem like you got the problem and you crazy. You don't have no problem. You're not crazy. He wants you to buy into that manure. So he could do his dastardly deeds. It's more than those women, my friends. It's more to it. If this man is holding on to other women, it's more to it than just a friend. You all remember that song by uh, Biz, what is the name? Biz, Biz was small. What is the name? You all remember that song. Oh, baby, you, you got what I need. You say he just a friend. You say he just a friend. Oh, baby, you. You remember that? But that's the female version. That's the male version. You remember when Biz Marquis, he saw that by the lady. But flip it around, men do it too. They claim stuff. This man is not walking in the light. He not walking in the light. He is trying to gaslight you. And if you allow this man to gaslight you, he got some more stuff. This man is a, a example of a narcissist. He is a man, he's a worldly man, a spiritual man. A spiritual man will listen to you. A spiritual man will have empathy for you. A spiritual man will try to keep your heart smiling. 24 7 7 day a week because he know you have to deal with other things. Yeah, that's it. Biz Marquis. Thank you, Sister Flo. So that's what this man is saying. Oh, baby, you, you got what I need. That's all it is. He is lying to you. He is trying to, no, nah, he's not trying. He is, yeah, he's trying to deceive you. Sister, when you have the spirit of the Lord, listen to me carefully. When you have the spirit of the Lord, the Lord going to shine some stuff on people. The spirit of the Lord going to show you some things. The spirit of the Lord is like a flashlight and it's not by parliament funkadelic. It's like a flashlight. It's going to show you some things. It's going to show you some things that's in the dark. When you have a flashlight, you can see what's in the door. So the spirit of God is like a flashlight. It show you what's in the door. The dog don't like light. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna give you an example, brother and sister. When you 
leave your home and you come into your home and it's dark on the inside, all you do is hit that light switch. When you hit that light switch, you could have one light bulb in the ceiling, right? That one light bulb, it illuminates everything. What happened? It chased the dog away. If you have roaches, those roaches going to run. If you have mice, they going to run. Things like that don't look, don't like dog. If you go outside at night, that's when you can see a whole bunch of animals around. Animals, majority of them don't like light. Now let's get a little advanced. Men or women that does things that's not right, they love darkness. They like to operate in the darkness. Narcissists deal with the, the darkness. Narcissists take good women for granted. A narcissist does not know what a good woman like until she's gone. That's when a narcissist understand when a good woman go. Narcissists, they always think that they could do anything. And you see what happens to a good woman, you keep doing, you keep letting things slide, right? You keep letting things slide. And you get to the point, he gets to the point where his conscience is seared. It's just like you put an iron on his conscience. And when you put an iron on his conscience, it burns his conscience. He don't have no sensitivity no more. His sensitivity is gone. He don't care how you feel because he know that you're not going to go nowhere. That's what he think until the day when you depart. When you get on Noah's Ark and you depart, that's when the rain comes. When the rain, this is what happens. Just check, this is how the situation goes, some of you good women. You, just like Noah, Noah was telling people, you better get right. You better get right. You better get right. The rain is coming. You see, during that time, they didn't know what rain was because during that particular time, the dew wet the earth. They didn't know what rain was. Noah was letting them know something was coming. So for a hundred years, Noah was doing his thing right until the day he went into the ark. When he went into the ark, the Lord shut the door. When the Lord shut the door, the Bible didn't say Noah shut it. It said the Lord shut it. So when the Lord shut it, you can't get in. Whatever in is in, whatever's out is out. So what this is what happened to some of you narcissist men out there, not my narcissist brothers, the narcissist worldly men. This is what these narcissist worldly men do. Sister, it's going to come a point where you're going to cry out to the Lord. And this man is doing you wrong. He's in the world. The spirit and the flesh never will get together. The spirit think one way. The flesh uh, think one way. Sister, when you enter the Lord, guess what? The Lord going to set you up in a situation. And when the Lord sets you up in a situation, he's going to shut the door. What do I mean by shut the door? You're going to get so tired of that worldly stuff, that worldly man. The Lord is going to shut the door. And when the Lord shut the door, guess what happened? You have cried your last tear. The last tear failed. You stop talking to him. You, you stop complaining. Because he's going to say you're complaining. You're not complaining. you putting your grievance up in front of him. So you're going to get to a point where you're going to get just say, I'm tired of this. So, sister, you got to get tired of being tired. That's all too. You got to get tired of being tired. Just like my sister say, and she always say this. You look better going than you look better coming. That chilling when a woman said to a man, you look better going than you look better coming. You're going to get to that point. When you get to it, when a, when a woman fed up, is nothing you can do about it. And when the woman go, let me tell you what the narcissist will do. At that particular time, whatever that narcissist was doing, he going to realize that the well ran dry. The water gone. That's when he going to want to get right. 
Men, if you're a narcissist and this woman leave you, it's too late because she didn't cry her last tear. She had came to you with all her grievances and you ignored it because you took it as a joke. Just like those people thought what Noah was doing was a joke until they went into, he went into the ark. The Lord going to shut the door on you. He going to shut that woman feeling against you. He going to shut that woman emotion against you. He going to shut that woman body against you. And everything else that good woman doing, the Lord going to shut all it up. The Lord going to say, bam, bam, bam. And you can call. This is what some of these narcissist men does. These narcissist men, they're going to notice that it's about to rain. They're going to start texting. Oh, where she at? They're going to start calling. Where she at? Then they get angry. Then they start using cussing and start leaving cuss words on the on the void man. You ain't in. Or they start texting. Then they get to the point they may try to track you down. If they know where you work, they probably gonna come to your job. They're gonna try to find out where you at. But you shutting down no door. Bam. 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 The Lord shut down no door. Sister, when the Lord shut down the door on these narcissist men, do not open, don't try to open the door for them. You gone. The Lord heard your cry. You know why the Lord heard your cry? Because you are a daughter of God. And if you are a daughter of God, God don't want his daughters to bend to the will of a worldly man that is a narcissist. A narcissist is a son of Satan. It's a spiritual thing. That's the bottom line. It's a spiritual thing. If you are a daughter of God, a good woman, 10% out of 100, you're a good woman, 10%. I ain't talking about all women. I'm talking about the 10% sister that follow God. I'm talking about the virtuous Proverbs 31 woman, the unicorn. That's what I'm talking about. God going to fix you up. Do not go backwards. Don't ever go backwards with a narcissist. Because what a narcissist is going to do, he's going to pretend that he's going to tell you about the good things when he first met you. He's not going to talk about those things that you talked about. If you bring it up, if you ever answer the phone, if you ever start responding to him, he's going to tell you about the good stuff. You're going to talk about the problem that you had. He don't want to talk about it. It's like it didn't exist. If he see you with another man, if he see you with another man, he gonna have a problem. If he hear that you with another man, he gonna have a problem. Because at that particular time, he gonna know that you were a good woman. And you know what hurt a narcissist the worst? When a good woman does not respond to him. It's not that a good woman is being trying to play a game with him. She just fed up. The Lord shut the door. How you doing, Sister Come? Sister Come said, Yes, go ahead, my car. Close the door and I will not go backwards. Amen. So you don't go backwards with a narcissist person. A narcissist is a narcissist. Unless that man have a relationship with God, he cannot change for the better. No man nor woman can change for the better unless he or she has a relationship with God first. A narcissist man, he can't get he can't get better, he get worse. And you got to understand what you're dealing with. I'm not talking to you spiritual brothers or you sp I'm not talking to you all, so don't think I'm beating up on you. I'm talking about the worldly men. The narcissist, they are going to take you for granted. That's right. I done lost my good thing. That's what they're going to know. They're going to use the word good because they know. then they're going to know what good means. Let me tell you all something. Let me, give you, let me give you something from my past. Let me give you something from my past. When I was, when I was young, when I was young, very young, I wasn't, I'm not the same brother that I was today. There, there was this one relationship, this one particular relationship let me tell you what happened in the mind of a man 
when a woman leaves. If she's a pretty decent woman. This is what happened. This is what happened to me many, many years ago. When, when she walked out that door, when she walked out that door, I can remember. I told her, I said, you walk out that door and not coming back. I thought about her. I thought about calling, but I didn't do that. They didn't have texting during that time, I don't think. No, they don't have texting during that time. I thought about calling. I didn't do that. I knew where she stayed. I didn't go where she was at. I wanted to go, but I didn't do that. Let me tell you, brother, listen to what I'm saying when you mess up. When you mess up, it hurts. Some men that mess up can identify what I'm talking about. When, when you and that woman that you really was into, it hurts when she gone. Men smile too, like women, like nothing is going on. But on the inside, when a man is hurt by a woman that leaves, the first thing when he gets up in the morning, he thinks about her. Even, even before he get to the morning, if he have to get up and make a bathroom run, the first thing he go into the bathroom, he thinking about it. He go back to bed thinking about it. Wake up in the morning thinking about it. Go to work thinking about it. In the car thinking about it. Thinking about it, thinking about it, thinking about it. She's gone. You wondering, is there any kind of way to get her back? It depends on how the relationship broke up. Now, sometimes a woman leaving a man is not a narcissist. It could be that she got some stuff going on too. Let me put that out there, okay? Now, the man could hurt. I'm going to tell you about my experience. One time it happened to me, and I was not a narcissist, okay? So I want to put that out there, but it happened to me. When she left, it hurt. Sister, uh, come and say, but does a narcissist even care? They already have other supply. They hurt, sister, when the good woman gone. They're not going to let you know, but they'll hurt if it's a if it's a good woman and they can identify good. It'll hurt because that man thought that the grass was greener on the other side. It's going to hurt him, but he might not let you know. He even may reach out to you, but he's not going to tell you. You know why he's not going to tell you? Because he is pride. He cannot let, a, most men are not going to let a woman know that you hurt him. Most of them will not. Because most men will look at it as something. But men that lose women that they really care about, and I'm not talking about a narcissist. I'm just telling you about my experience. I didn't do no narcissist stuff when this happened to me. It happened to me one time. So when she left, it hurt. I was thinking about her throughout the day. I did not reach out to her. I wanted to, but I didn't. When I when I, I felt hungry, when I felt hungry, it could be a good, a good big nice plate of food. I would get my fork and I would Get into it, I would eat like maybe two fault spoons or teaspoon, whatever you want to say, and I push that plate away. My aunt, one of my aunts at that time, she said, Tony, you need to eat. What happened? I started losing weight. I started losing weight. What men would say when you if you tell a man about you having a problem with a woman leave you. This is what most men say. They will listen to you. Most men, they will listen to you, but they don't want you talking about it too much. Most men will say, hey man, you need to get over her because all these other women. That's how men do things. 
men, when men hurt when women leave them, men a lot of times, they don't have support system like women do. Men say, if you tell, if you, if you go to like a bar, if a group of men go to a bar and they start talking about women and one man starts saying, well, man, she left and I don't, you know, she left and I, and they know too much to they boys I got feeling for. They don't talk, they don't talk like that. They'll just say, you know, man, I kind of miss her. They don't say they love her. They say, man, I kind of miss her. Because you, so, you can't show that soft side to men most of the time, how society has. Then most men, if you're in a bar setting, and you tell men that, men will say, man, what you what you talking about, man? It's, a, it's plenty of women. Look at all these women right here. You're crying over that, but that's how men do it. <sighs> then you go home. You go home. Nobody is riding you. Then you break down because nobody sees it. Men sometimes cry in the dark and there's nothing simple about it. Men are not going to too much shed tears in front of other people unless it's like a funeral or something like that or they win the Super Bowl or whatever. But men in general are not going to do it. Women will let go to you, but men don't do it. So what happened? I'm trying to date. I'm trying to go out with other women. You know, this one particular woman, I went out with her, right? While I was going out with her, I was thinking about the other woman, right? Because that's where my feeling was at. We got to this woman's house and she disrobed, right? What do I mean by she disrobed? She put on this little outfit and she got in the bed and she said, if you want to, Tony, you can get in the bed with me. And I said, some of you probably heard it before. And I said to myself, if I get in that bed with her, I know what she want to do if I get in the bed with her. So she kept telling me, she said, come on, come on, get in the bed, get in the bed. I said, I, I, I said I'm straight. I was sitting in the chair. So even though I went out with that other woman, my mind was on the other side of town. You ought to heard that song before. Your mind is here with me. What? Your body is here with me, but your mind is on the other side of town. I know what that's like. When you with someone, but your mind on somebody else. Somebody that you're really into, but it's gone. She gone. So, I did not get in the bed with the woman that night. I didn't do it. So, I got in my car and I was still feeling bad. Even though I went out with the other woman, I was still feeling because my, my heart was not there. But as time went by, things started changing. I had to I had to start accepting the fact that she left. And when I the sooner I accepted, things got better. My weight pulled, my weight got back up, and I was able to function again. And at that particular time, let me tell you, at that particular time, I knew what the I know what the mistake was. The mistake was like a lot of you sisters do and brothers, you put another person on a pedestal. I talked about this last night. You put another person on a pedestal. That's what that's what I did. I put a human, a female human, on a pedestal. And when I did that, that what hurt the most. That's what I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, before I depart from you this evening. Never put a woman or a man on a pedestal. The only person that belongs on a pedestal in your life is Jesus. Because men come and go, women come and go. Do not do it. Sister, sisters, when you look back and you say, only if he really knew me, what you be doing is saying, if he only seen that I was a good woman for him, if he only knew that I had a relationship with God, through his son Jesus. If he only knew that I had him, I was there for him. If he only knew. 
But now he want me back. He want me back because he find out when he was in the streets and stuff and he was doing his thing and I was home. I did not hide from him. I was there whenever he need me or wanted me. I was there. But now he wants me. He wants me, but I can't go back to him. Why I can't go back to him? Because God shut that door. And if the Lord shut the door, I'm not going back. Because what? Guess what? God got a man out there that will see me for who I am. I'm going to serve God. I'm going to let God mold me to be that Proverbs 31 woman. I know it's a man out there for me. And I'm not going to go looking for a man. I'm going to let that man find me. That's how God operates. God's going to put me in a situation where this man find me. I don't know who he is. I don't need none of you my, none of you sisters helping me how to find my man. That's what some of you sisters need to say. I don't need you to match make for me. I don't need for you to say I know a good man. No. You wait for God to set up the situation because God is the best matchmaker in the world because he know how you are, sister. He know how that man is. And with that said, I appreciate you, brothers and sisters. That right, sister, uh, David, wait patiently. My brother and sister, thank you so much for being a part of the broadcast. I love you. I love you. I love you. Peace out.